Hey everyone, welcome to Data Engineering. <laughs> That's not what the show is called. Hey everyone, welcome to Data Driven Decisions. Today, we're gonna to be talking about building an ETL pipeline that requests data in from the Spotify API and then transforms that data throughout a Pythonic process and then lands it in an S3 bucket so that we can build up our own data lake and analyze this data and question our music listening needs. I need to listen to music personally. We're gonna go through some of the ETL theory which will help you if you're an aspiring data engineer or data scientist. And uh, the question that I set out to ask is, are rap albums getting shorter? Because you know, Kanye dropped Jesus King and I checked and it was like 25 minutes and I was like, so where's part two? And there was no part two. And it wasn't the first time I did this. Yay, Kids See Ghosts, the Pusha T are all like half an hour long. And I'm wondering if this is a trend that's continuing across the rap industry or is it just yay playing some games with us? Obviously, Drake is gonna mess up the numbers here because he drops those double-sided platinum mixtapes of DJ Khaled, which are like three hours long and no one cares. Just, you just listen to the hits. But we're gonna find out. We're gonna get the data, but we're gonna find out ourselves, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna build everything we need to answer the questions by it, and we're gonna make some data-driven decisions. Uh. <laughs> so there are a few prerequisites for this project that you're gonna need. I'm just gonna go through them real quick. So first of all, you're gonna need an AWS account. And if you haven't got an AWS account already, then I'd really recommend you try it out because you get one year on their free tier, which is where things are super cheap for a while, uh, but I, you do have to put in your credit card details. So if you're worried about building infinite loops or forgetting to turn things off, uh, just you know be extra cautious that they have your card details so you will get billed for that if you're not careful. And I know a guy who, I won't mention his name, but you know who you are, who, left a bit of recursion, bit of an infinite loop running overnight. And he came back into the office the next morning. I think he had a bill for about 13 grand. Fortunately, that didn't come out of his salary, but you know, he got, he got a little slap on the wrist for that one. So that's number one. And number one, also make sure you turn these things off. Number two is your Spotify API. And you're gonna need an authorization token on your account to say, uh, yes, this is me and I'm pulling data. That's it. that's all it's saying basically. So I'm gonna put a link to all of these below uh, to get to this authorization guide. Within the authorization guide, you can find this page which says you need to register your application. So you have to say you're building some sort of data analysis application. Follow one of the authorization flows down below. Follow these processes and then boom, you got your Spotify API key and you're ready to, ready to go. Number three is Terraform. And Terraform is like, you actually have to install on your computer, similar to how you have to install Python. And once you've got Terraform, you've completed this download process, you can check that you have it by uh, typing in Terraform dash version. But you have to spell version correctly, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, so as you can see uh, down there, I've got version 14 ready to go. And uh, also you're gonna need Python. So once again, download Python. <laughs> and again, uh, this time you have to do Python dash V to check you've got it. And then finally, um, there's this little library which I quite like called Spotify, because it's Python. And in Spotify, it just makes the authentication a little bit easier, makes exploring the data a little bit more easy because you, you can pull what you want more easily, I find. And again, to install that, I keep going to the desktop, is pip install the package, not Spotify. It's got bleh, spot a pie, spot a pie. Spot, spot a, spot a pie. <laughs> but since I've already got spot pie, since I've already got spot a pie installed, yeah, it's requirement already satisfied. Bing, bang, boom, a boom, a boom, boom, boom. Anyway. That is the four, one, two, three, four. Those are the five things that you're gonna need to do this project. There's one final thing you need and that's enthusiasm. All right, you're gonna need a bit of enthusiasm to do this project, but I think we got this. I think we got this because we get some sweet data. We're gonna do some sweet analysis. So let's go, let's get this baby. Woo! 
Okay, so here we are in the Python code. This script is called Average Album Length Playlist. And what that means is you give it a playlist. In this case, I've chosen one of the most flames rap playlist out there, Rap Caviar. And it takes every artist from there and it looks at the length of every album they've ever released and it pulls out all of this data. So we're gonna look at that object in a second and see what it looks like. And just for clarity, um, this is where we are in the architecture diagram, okay? We are using the Spotify API to retrieve the data and then this code, once we've understood it properly, we're gonna put it into the Lambda and then we're gonna wrap it all up with Terraform. So uh, at the top, we have some pretty standard imports. Uh, Spotify is the library I mentioned earlier, CSV for writing CSV files, Spotify 3 for the AWS related work and daytime for all daytime related needs. Then I've got a couple um, configs and tools that I put in. So this Spotify playlist script is nothing more than a couple dictionaries that map the name of the playlist to the URI of the playlist. So I've got uh, Rap Caviar over here and I've got one of my own ones, Drivehood, which I wanted to analyze as well. So to get the URI of any playlist, you simply go to that playlist, click on the three dots wherever you are, and then cop copy Spotify URI, bing, bang, Boom, it's in, cool, so it's that easy. All right, then I've got a little tool which we'll come back to once uh, we use it. And then a Spotify object, so this is the benefit of the Spotify library. If I just show you real quick, if I um, click on that object and then go to the IntelliSense, you can see it makes it very easy and very clear on what I should pass in and what I'm gonna be getting. And it may, I just feel like it makes it more obvious and there's so many choices. So that's what that object does and we're gonna be using it to pull out some of the data. This is what our final data dictionary is gonna look like here on line 11. And just initialize this so that we can build that data dictionary throughout the process of extracting the data. And then playlist, this is just so that we can configure this script however we like at the moment, we're looking at wrap caviar. So this is what I've set the variable as and then this will go to this dictionary I mentioned earlier, map it to this URI. So let's get into it. Right, so gather data local is what we're gonna look at first because it just makes it a little bit easier if we consider this case without any of the uh, AWS stuff going on around us. So if I just open this one up real quick. Now I'm gonna go through this line by line just to benefit for the benefit of your understanding. Um, so first of all, we're gonna open up a new file called wrap caviar album CSV and W because we're gonna be writing in the file and the headers in this CSV are gonna come from the keys of our final data dictionary, which are year released, album length, album name, etc. And this writer object is just an object which uh, handles writing uh, bytes and binary data into a CSV. So we're gonna do the write header method, which takes in the field names from the header, which is this object here. And uh, this will give us a CSV with these headers. So straight off the bat, I'm gonna run it down to here and we're gonna have an object in memory which has uh, those headers which we just mentioned. Next, we're gonna go get the artists in question and this is the little script I mentioned earlier which was in our imports which I said I'd come back to. So here we are and if I go into it, what this does is it takes in one of the URIs as a variable and then it goes through this playlist by picking out playlist tracks from um, that object, the Spotify object up here. And what it will do is for every song, which is a track, because we'll see in a minute that some, uh, some data types that come back aren't necessarily tracks, then it pulls out the zeroth artist on that track. So the zeroth artist is always the main artist should be anyway i mean who's really the main artist on what a time to be alive is it drake featuring future is it future featuring drake but anyway this one we pull through and we we pull through the zeroth artist for every case so if i run through that and we can look at every artist who's on uh, rap caviar right now so we've now got 40 artists which is about right because it's 40 tracks that's a gross way of looking at the data let's do it like this boom this looks about right Obviously, we've got a little TJ, you know, capping everything. Wait, no, TJ is not the guy I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of Lil Tecca. There's just too many Lils these days. It's difficult to keep track. Lil Baby, Lil Easy, Lil Dirk, Lil Mosey's on this list too. Anyway, so these are all the artists that we're going to be going through in this loop here. So four artists in the list of artist keys uh, because we've returned a dictionary which has the key as the artist URI and then the value as the string name of the artist themselves. 
So for every artist we go through, we just print out that artist just to check we're doing the right thing and then get artist albums. So let's look at what artist albums looks like for Lil TJ. Artist albums for Lil TJ, we've got some items. So inside here, we've got three albums and it's available markets, which is actually a bit of an issue. We'll see in a second. Um, the artists um, themselves, who in this case is Lil TJ. So yeah, it's got the URI of the album in here, which is all we need, because actually, annoyingly, this return doesn't give you the length of the album, so we actually have to go calculate that in a minute. So I'm only looking at GB and US album. There's an interesting case where it's like, for graduation by Kanye West, there are certain countries in the Middle East whereby he had to release a different version of his album because of, um, I guess, cultural reasons, but I'm not sure. So this happens more often than we imagine, I assume. So I've just, I'm just gonna filter on only GB in US for now. So from here, we're gonna build out a unique key and this unique key is just gonna be our sort of flagpole to say, yeah, we've got this album and we're gonna put it in albums obtained and that's all it's gonna be used for. Um, so go down to here, because now we've set our albums obtained. We're going through every artist and then we're going through every album and we're going through every URI in the album to be specific. And within there, we're then gonna get the album data. So like I said, when you request an artist and you want to look at their albums, it doesn't give you the length of the album. So instead what we have to do is get the URI off the album from the artist and then from the album, we can actually work out the length of their album. And we do this by going through every song and looking at how long each song is and put it all together. So album data, tracks, yeah, tracks. So within here, we've got the tracks and we have items for each track and within the items of each track, we have the duration within milliseconds. So this is what we're gonna be using to work out how long the album is. And as you can see, four song in album data, tracks, items, we add through and we um, work out album length in milliseconds. And we don't need to do um, album length zero inside that loop. We just need to do it for every album we go through. So uh, for this album, which is I think State of Emergency, yep we are gonna work out the length of the album. So let's just see if I let this run through. All right, one track is 200,000 milliseconds. There we go, that looks more like it. That was a pretty, that would be a short album. Um, this is 1,341,604 milliseconds. So now we go back to that writer object and we write in the data for everything we've got. because so we've got everything we need now. We've got the release date from this album. We've got the album length, we've got the name and we have the artist as well. So I'm gonna let this run the whole way through and we're just gonna go to the, final data dictionary so that we see what we come out with at the end. So if I just hit let this play, kick my feet up for a little bit. <sighs> All right, so now we've finished running through and let's check the final data dictionary. Is final data dictionary not here? I don't care. Because it's here. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm returning final data dictionary I've actually not added anything to the final data dictionary. In the meantime, we can see that we have successfully written uh, our file called wrap caveat albums, which we defined. And uh, if I check in that, it's gonna be exactly what we expect to see in the dictionary. Yeah, year released, album length, album name, artist. So, my God, Lil Baby released a lot of albums. Look at this, perfect timing, 2017. Harder than hard, 2017. To the hard way, 2017, too hard. 2017, harder than ever. 2018, drip harder. 2018, street gossip. He got bored of the hard thing, didn't he? Someone, someone called him out. I've done the final data dictionary all wrong. I've realized that you actually have to append to each of these keys because I've defined it as a list up here as an empty list. So uh, this is the correct way to run your final data dictionary if you're interested in getting that object back bonus. So moving on. So keep up with our little architecture diagram. This is what we were just looking at, the code itself that actually does that data retrieval. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Lambda function itself, how that's gonna work and saving that data into S3. So um, if I just scroll down a little bit, I've got the gather data function, which is exactly the same as the function above, apart from I haven't done the final data dictionary stuff in here because we don't care. Okay, so this runs through and does it exactly the same as what we were looking at above, but instead of ending 
uh, after we've written our CSV, what we then do is create an S3 resource by uh, making a resource object from Botto3, which is the AWS uh, Python SDK. And we want an S3 resource. And we say that the file name that we're gonna do is gonna be partitioned on uh, the datetime object. So looking at date, the amount of day. So this partitions our data for us with this little key here, as you can see, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then take the object, uh, which is um, this right here is the bucket. So just make that clear. This right here is the bucket and uh, the key is gonna be the file name, which we've just defined here. Um, and then upload the file, which we've just created, which is uh, temp wrap caviar albums. And um, so this is the script, which is actually gonna um, run. And the way this runs is by a Lambda handler. So Lambda handlers are a special function that we use when we have our lambdas and they always have to take in uh, two arguments, which are event and context. And this is because you can actually pass events into Lambda and pass it some sort of context to run in such that it can behave in a different way. But we're not interested in that today. We're just gonna be running gather data one time. We don't care about the arguments. It does some kind of self-sufficient in itself. So we're gonna get the Terraform in a minute. The package is all of this up. And what it looks like is this. And this is the Lambda uh, GUI. And you could do this all through the GUI if you like, but I'm trying to teach you some Terraform as well. Um, and this is just the script that we've been looking at with some packages on the left, which I'll go through. And uh, this, <laughs> this returns the file data dictionary, which we don't care about, it doesn't actually do anything. The important thing is that it uploads the file here. Um, and uh, this is gonna be set to run the Lambda handler, although the main is here and it says gather data local. Um, this is actually going to run Lambda handler. And I believe that's in the configuration somewhere. Okay, so it's in the configuration somewhere. This is why I love Terraform. And it's because we can just simply say the handler is list. So somewhere you have to say what the handler function is. And in our case, it is Lambda handler, which just runs gather data. I'm gonna run the uh, actual gather data function and see what happens. Hopefully I land a that CSV object, which we've just written into my S3 bucket. Now we chill. Yeah, I know you get the drip and I like that. Okay, I don't know what that argument was meant to be. I don't care. Process finished X code zero. This should have worked correctly. Let's find out. I've gone to my S3 buckets, my Spotify analysis data, and I haven't looked at this since last year. So hopefully if I press refresh, we're gonna see some data from 2021. Bin, right. So as expected, we've got the third, which is March 23rd, which is today and we're just gonna download this, check it out. Embarrassingly, I don't have Excel, so let's check it out in numbers. Oh, and yeah, this is the CSV which we were looking at before. So great, we've effectively uh, built the ETL process. We just now need to actually make it into a pipeline that runs itself, because obviously we don't wanna sign on every Friday when, when the artist drops some new flames and then we have to run this pipeline, that'd be stupid. So let's talk about the Terraform. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the Terraform now. And the Terraform, like I mentioned before, is infrastructure as code. So it's gonna build out everything you need to make this a fully functioning pipeline in AWS. And it's gonna handle all of the permissions as well, which is potentially one of the stickiest points when you're getting used to cloud providers for the first time. So on this architecture diagram, as you can see, um, when we run Terraform apply, it's gonna build out everything we need, except the bucket, actually, you need to build that yourself manually, sorry. Um, then cloud, it will build out the cloud watch alarm, which acts as a trigger for the Lambda function, which we're gonna build out as well. Um, and like I said, all of the permissions. So let's get into it. Um, first off, straight off the bat, we have the Lambda function, which is, ob is obviously pretty integral to uh, this pipeline process. So we have a resource, which is a Lambda function. Uh, we've called it Spotify analysis. Um, and you have to pass it in a zip payload. This payload is every file that the function needs to operate. And this includes packages, because when you run a Lambda, by default, it's just gonna have, you know, if you just installed Python out of the box, so it's, gonna, it's only gonna have the default libraries. So obviously we need to add a couple of libraries like um, date time, requests, and uh, Spotify. So I'll go through that in a second, but just understand that 
the payload is effectively what gets uploaded into the Lambda and what's gonna run itself. We're gonna call the function Spotify analysis. The handler um, is gonna be what the file name is, dot what the function or method name is. So in our case, we've got uh, average album length playlist and inside there we have our function called Lambda handler. And the role, which uh, gives the user permission to execute the Lambda is this IAM role, which I'll come to in a second. Runtime, which version of Python using, 3.7. And timeout, so if it just gets stuck in a loop, when do we want to time out? We're doing 300 seconds. Then we're gonna pass some environment variables as well. Um, these are the Spotify client ID and client secret, uh, which I've got in my environment variables and which you should have picked up earlier. That's the Lambda. I'm gonna talk about the um, variables so if I go to variables here in our Terraform file, um, I have to find a bunch of, um, well, apart from this one, a bunch of empty default, like no defaults, just called defining the type. And these are all the variables that uh, we're gonna need, including our uh, AWS access key and secret key, which I'll put in the documentation for how you can find those yourself. Now, when you build this out, it's gonna ask you to input these variables because we've not defined our default. If you would like a more automated process, you can pump in the environment variables yourself. Uh, but for this one, we're gonna be passing in through the terminal. So those are all the variables that we're gonna need. And these variables, the AWS access key and secret key are used in the providers file. And the provider file in Terraform just says who is your cloud provider. So in our case, it's AWS. And again, we've got the variable for the region, which um, I'm gonna be using EU West one in this case. And uh, again, uh, the, there are the variables which we, which we mentioned earlier. So those are all the variables that came up in the Lambda and those are all the variables and providers that we're gonna need. So that's all of those files handled. Now let's talk about the roles a little bit because this is potentially the stickiest bit. Okay, so here I am inside the I am Lambda file and this handles all of the I am related stuff for Lambda. So all of the access around AWS. And what we're ultimately building here is this IAM role, which is a Lambda execution role. And as we can see, it picks up this assume role policy from this data object, which is the Lambda trust policy, which says which entities do we trust to run this service? And we trust Lambda and we trust EC2 to do this. But this isn't the only piece of the puzzle that we've got here. Uh, we've also got this execution policy document, which says when we execute, what permissions do we want to operate in? And as you can see, we've given it star, okay, everything on these services, on all resources. If you're working in an office or an enterprise or anywhere where security is a bit of an issue, do not do this because you will <laughs> things up. You will make it very easy for attackers to uh, expose you if you do not limit as much off the access as possible. So do not just do star if, because you're feeling lazy basically. So we've also got this policy document and uh, this policy um, is just this policy document, but actually in a policy, but we have to make a resource object for that. And then again, we need to attach this uh, policy onto the role, which is the Lambda execution role. Sorry, the Lambda execution role. So what we end up with is this, our Lambda execution role. Um, we have the trust uh, relationships for these services. And in here we have the permissions for what the Lambda can actually do. And it's the execution policy, which is that data object which we just saw. So that's IAM. Okay, so we've just spoken about the Lambda and all of its IAM permissions. Now we're gonna go on to the CloudWatch alarm. Uh, just to go back to the architecture diagram real quick, we've just spoken about the Lambda function and this is what we're going to be doing now. And the CloudWatch alarm to the left here is just going to act as our signal to send off a signal to the Lambda function to invoke it every X days. In our case, we're doing seven and this acts as our trigger. So we've got two resources that we need to manage here. Uh, one of them is the rule itself, which says that we run this trigger every week. And the other one is the actual trigger. The, and we have to say um, where, where that wants to go. So what rule is it using? It's using a rule which says trigger every seven days. And we want to point that rule at our Lambda function. So AWS Lambda function at its ARN. Um, and within that, you need a IAM policy as well that just says, allow your CloudWatch alarm to invoke the Lambda. So as you can see here, we've allowed Lambda invoke for 
uh, this particular CloudWatch event rule on that particular Lambda. Uh, so that's it. That's all the Terraform we need. Now we're gonna go through the commands that you have to run in order to get this Terraform running and deploying your resource into your AWS account. So now we've got all of our Terraform in place. Let's look at how we're gonna deploy it out and the commands that we need to run in Terraform to make that happen. I've written this AWS architecture plan bash script over here. And inside here, this packages up all of the required site packages, external packages, and the Python scripts that we've written into that zip file I mentioned earlier for the Lambda so that it puts it all together and then deploys that as its own little code package. Also runs a couple of Terraform commands. So we want this one if it's your first time running it, but it's safe to run multiple times if it's not your first time, uh, which will just initialize Terraform in the directory that you're in and it will pick up any backend configuration if you've got it. So then the next few lines here are just copying um, these external libraries like Spotify and requests into a Lambda payload uh, folder, which I've got here and also copies the required Python files. So the config and the tools and the actual main script itself. And then comes out of that and zips it all up and then goes into our Terraform directory and runs a Terraform plan. So I'm gonna run this script. Cool, so this is gonna ask me for my access key. So I'll be right back. So, as you can see here, I've now got some resources to add and it's going to be the uh, Lambda permission to allow it to call and the Lambda function itself. And also this is going to, the ARN if that's gonna change, that's fine. Um, so this is the plan that you'll see before you run Terraform Apply, which just says these are the resources that we're gonna build out. And in this case, it's gonna be taking the payload from here dot dot payload zip, which is what we've created. I'm actually not sure where it's saved. Here it is in the root. Um, and inside payload zip is gonna be everything inside this Lambda payloads file, which has got our new average album length playlist uh, Python script. And that's gonna all deploy out when I run Terraform apply. So now if I run Terraform apply, it's gonna say, <laughs> give me your variables again. It's gonna go through and apply these changes and build out the resources. The way Terraform does this is by using what's called a TF state file. And inside the TF state file is a sort of snapshot of what Terraform knows about your AWS land. So it knows, for instance, that I have a particular resource, which is gonna be one of the IAM permissions, this IAM policy document that allows these actions. And every time you run a plan or apply, it checks the TF state file against actually what you've got in your account and then says, okay, actually, you know, we need to we need to build this resource again. And that's, that's what happens in the plan and apply. It says, well, we're missing that resource, so we need to build this one out. So here we go. It's now found, again, same, same plan. Um, when you run a Terraform apply, it actually does the plan first anyway, unless you uh, add the auto confirm flag. So do I want to perform these actions? Yeah, full send. So now it's gonna build out that Terraform function. Cool, so now I've got a Lambda function. If I go into it, it's got the code which we've been working on down here and all the packages required. Um, and it's when it comes in, we're gonna run the Lambda handler and it's gonna build this out and it's gonna save our CSVs into our S3 bucket. And we've seen what that looks like before. And we've got this CloudWatch event over here, uh, which runs every week. So this is ready to go. So every Friday, this is gonna run and add a little bit more data to our data lake in S3. And over time, we're gonna build up this data lake and we're gonna be able to answer all of these questions that we were asking about, uh, about uh, rap caviar music and the length of albums. So that's it. We've got everything we need. Now we've got a fully functioning data pipeline in AWS. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. I hope that you get all the data you need to answer all the questions you have about your music listening tastes. If you like it, let me know in the comments. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments because I'm very open to criticism. I want to hear everything that I did wrong here. And please download the GitHub repo, send in some branches, like let's see what you've got. Let's see what you can do with this. Today we've kind of touched on the data engineering end of things where we've gone over the ETL theory. So we extracted data from the Spotify API. We transformed it using a Python script and then we load it into an S3 data lake. And all of that was encapsulated with Terraform. 
That's usually the typical role of a data frame engineer is kind of engineer these solutions and build out these pipelines that pump data into a certain location from a source. In the next video, I can go for more of a data science role, which is where once you've got this data lake or maybe even a data warehouse, then what you can do is analyze that data and draw some insights from it. So we can answer the question of whether or not rap albums are getting shorter. And yeah. So some of you might have noticed that I've had a tab open throughout this, which is coincidentally called pretty much the same thing as what we're looking at. And that's because I've written an article about this. So if you're interested in reading more about this solution, then check it out. I'll put the link in the comments below. And it's got a bit more of the data analysis part of it, which I said I'd go into another video if you're interested. So let me know if you want to see any more of this. But again, all of the code is going to be on my GitHub and I'll put that in the comments as well. So you can just download this code and you don't even have to think about it or you can write it out yourself and follow along this video however, however you want to learn best. Thanks for watching. This has been Data Driven Decisions. I'm Liam Hartley and I'll see you next time. Peace. Woohoo! We done. We out of here. We out of here. Thank you for watching. I've been Liam Hartley. You stay classy, London. <laughs> hey, I'm done. <laughs>